Hey, it's Joel. We've got a mess. This is a mess. I've got a messy desk. Let me clean this up, and then I got something really cool to show you. Uh, give me a moment. I burped. Bam! There we go. Desk is clean, and now we've got a chance to show off an incredible model made by someone really cool, and then possibly make it bigger than it should be. Let's do it right here on 3D Printing Nerd. Welcome back. It's been a long time. Cleaned up my studio just a little bit, only to make it messier. There's a whole bunch of stuff going on, and uh, we've got a live streaming setup almost ready to go. That's coming up, but right now there's a really, really cool model that I want to show you by Geeky Fay. Ha! This is it, right here. This was printed on the Prusa SL1, and it's a Geeky Fay vase. I reached out to Fay and asked her to tell me a little about her design process and how she came about with this vase. Have a look. Hey, Joel. The inspiration for this design actually came from the idea of circular symmetry and taking it into the third dimension. I love organic shapes and flowing designs, and so I wanted to create a purely aesthetic vase that captured all of those ideas. Given my long time experience with 3D Studio Max, I initially kind of sketched it out there as I'm still a bit more comfortable with polygonal modeling. From there though, I took it into Fusion 360 where I played around with the circular symmetry and sweep along spline functions until I got a shape that I was happy with. From there, it was just testing and tweaking until it was fully printable. Like this. <laughs> Thanks, Faye. Uh, for this vase, I printed it on the Prusa SL1. And for this color, I mixed Prusa Magenta Resin with Soriatech Gray Fast Resin and came up with this. It's almost like a summer fruit, I want to call it. So that's what I'm going to call it. I'm calling it Summer Fruit. This color is now Summer Fruit. Unless you have a better idea, leave it down in the comments if you have a better name for this incredibly cool color. When this was done printing, I used the plastic scraper to get the resin off of the build plate. The SL1 doesn't have an angled build plate top, so the resin sits and you use that scraper to just kind of drip it off into the tank. The build plate attached to the platform for the CW1, that's the cleaning workstation, and this was done before I got that incredibly cool clamping system printed for the CW1 tank. You should probably check that out if you haven't already. That gray thing you see over the tank, that's a printed cover. That's a 3D printed cover for the tank. It's awesome, and I'll put a link down in the description in case you want one of your own. The CW1 wash cycle is roughly three minutes. Once the wash cycle was done, I got it out and I, I removed it from the build plate. I have some isopropyl alcohol in a spray bottle, and I use that to clean the build plate and put it back into the SL1. Uh, that whatever's left on there after I wipe it just evaporates, and then that cover prevents anything from dripping into the resin. So you're just you're just good to go, and it works awesome. Now you can see I'm spraying with air from my air compressor, and this removes the rest of the isopropyl alcohol from the model and gets it ready for curing. You don't want any, any sitting on there while it's curing because that could be not good. And so uh, if you have the means, just spray it off with some air. After I spray it off, the, I put it back into the CW1 for a drying and curing cycle. Uh, and then of course I clean up my workstation because this is, a, this is very much a case of my, my mess being off camera. But what you see on camera, nice and tidy. Once out, the model looks really great. And this color once cured looks incredible. Again, summer fruit unless you have a better idea and you leave it in the comments. There you go. That's the Geeky Fay vase printed on the SL1 in that summer fruit, unless you have a better name for it, color. And I think it turned out incredible. I really like how it looks. I like how it feels. It doesn't smell like anything right now because it's fully cured, so we're good. But that is a neat little vase. I really, really like that. And I should go bigger. I should go bigger, absolutely. I've got that Peel Poly Phenom Noir, and I've got some smoky black fast resin. And that smoky black resin is semi-translucent, and I think it would be really cool. And so if I make this bigger, 
and I print it in that Soraya Tech smoky black fast gray, fast resin, not gray. I think it would look good. I think it would look really good. So it's gonna be solid, semi-translucent and wonderful. Let's do it. Now that it's done, it's time to get it out of the Noir and it's freaking huge. The model looks incredible. I'll get it off the build plate and I'm gonna put it into my ultrasonic cleaner. Honestly, having this help clean off the models is fantastic. I'll leave a link in the description for the one I got. The vase is actually too big for the cleaner, so I have to move it around with my hands. I even found my old Sonicare toothbrush to help get any pesky resin still left on the model. No, this will not be used to brush my teeth. Gross. After it's time in the cleaner, it's time to cure it. And thankfully, we've had a plethora of incredibly sunny days here in the Pacific Northwest. So I put it on top of my rotating platform by the window and I let mother nature do the curing. And wham, look at that. Look at that. That is incredible. This is the Geeky Fave vase printed on the Pio Polyphenom Noir. And this is using the Soriatex Smoky Black resin that is semi-translucent. And it looks wonderful. Look at this can almost fit inside of it. <laughs> almost, that's what, 250% scale, something like that. The print time wasn't too bad uh, and and honestly, uh, it looked great printing and it was exciting to watch. And God, that time-lapse, right? That time-lapse. I love it. This looks incredible. I am really, really happy with it. I did take some notes about the process though, getting from here to here. And I think there's some things though we need to talk about. Let me get my notes. I wrote it down on my phone. Okay, so while the SL print, so during the SL1 printing, during that process, uh, gloves, right? I wasn't wearing gloves. You stupid idiot. I'm sorry. <laughs> you should always wear gloves when handling resin and doing resin-based 3D printing. My gloves weren't at home. I didn't have access to them. I'm, I've got pretty skilled at being able to remove the build plate and not touch a lot of uncured resin. Honestly, here's 100% here's the truth. It's not like the floor is lava. It's not like touching resin will cause any of your extremities to just evaporate. That's not the case. Victory is mine. What happens with uncured resin is you can develop uh, an allergy or a reaction or something like that. Some people, when they get uncured resin on their skin, uh, the skin reddens or bubbles or it, it can be bad that can happen. I have found that that doesn't happen with me. And once the footage was shot that you saw, I went into the house and I washed my hands with soapy water for more than 20 seconds. And so everything turned out okay. Again, always do what you can to be as safe as possible when handling the resin. If it does get onto your skin, if uncured resin does happen to get onto any parts of your skin, just wash it as soon as you can. You may or may not develop a sensitivity to uncured resin, and you'll only know if unfortunately it gets on your fingers. I don't have that sensitivity. You may or may not, but that's the case. That's what happened there. And so I will always preach to be as safe as possible and to wear your gloves. In that case, I didn't have my gloves, but I tried to be as safe as possible. And I washed my hands as soon as I was done shooting that footage with soap and water for more than 20 seconds. And if you get uncured resin on your hands, you should do the same. While this was printing on the Noir, uh, no problems to really, to really talk about. Um, I did suffer from anticipation. <laughs> you know, I've been printing for years now, years, and I still suffer from just, I can't wait for the long prints to be done. I can't wait until they get done and I can hold them, see them, and touch them in real life. That's just, that's part of who I am. That's part of something that will never go away. And I enjoy that a lot. And so while I was 
uh, printing on the Noir, I came back to the studio a couple times just to check on it because I was, I was anticipating something awesome and I didn't want it to fail and I was just really excited. Uh -huh. And you probably do the same, I would imagine. And it's just, it's just, it's something, right? We're using additive technologies to build something and it takes time to do it. And so you get really excited and the anticipation grows because when a model's finished, it's almost like Christmas morning. So anyway, no problems, just uh, anticipation. Ah, so with cleaning this model, you saw me put it in the ultrasonic cleaner. Uh, oh, hey, Sean, while you're editing this, uh, I noticed that the audio in the camera I was using to film the ultrasonic cleaner, when it was on, the audio was horrible. Can you just play a couple seconds for him? Yeah. Terrible, right? Who knew? Uh, the camera was a, a cell phone and it was pretty close to the ultrasonic cleaner. And my guess is the ultrasonic waves that it generates are able to impact the microphone and the camera and cause that horrific noise. That's just cool. I had no idea. But anyway, I'm glad that we didn't actually use that noise in the footage. And I'm sorry to Sean because he had to hear it in his headphones. Uh, I love you, dude. But anyway, while curing, um, I know that there's uh, level 52 recommends purple power or uh, simple green. Uncle Jesse, I know a lot of people use simple green. Uh, I went, I don't know if you can see that, but uh, it is uh, Mr. Clean. Simple green, Mr. Clean. One's a bald headed dude, one's not. Uh, honestly, it foamed up a lot, like a lot, lot. Like I had to scoop foam out of the ultrasonic cleaner in order to make it not foamy. Uh, I eventually found some simple green and I mixed my ratios and it is much better. Uh, and then I was able to clean it just fine. You'll see in the video that there is some foam around this. And unfortunately, what you, what you can kind of see, you see some bits on the model. Just, uh, you might even be able to see them in the, the shots when it was on the, the curing platform. But there's, uh, there were still some soap solids from that, that ended up on the model and I couldn't scrub them off. Oh, that's terrible. But anyway, it's all a process of learning and I still think it looks great. And finally, once I was done with the ultrasonic cleaner in this face, you saw me use my air compressor at home to blow off the IPA before curing it. I didn't, I don't have anything here. I have something that I'm going to be ordering that level 52 recommended. It's a, it's an electronic air blower and I'll have that here in my resin dungeon, resin fungin whatever we want to call it. And I'll, I'll use that for this. And I just, I just don't have it yet. But still, I think that I was able to get the majority of the liquid off just by holding the model and going <laughs> just like that. Most of it came off, not all of it though. And I think I would have gotten a better cure. There's dust in the air. I bet I, I, <laughs> I, bet I would have gotten a better cure on this had I had the right formula in the ultrasonic cleaner to clean it off. And if I had an air blower here or an air compressor just to kind of hose it off. And so um, that would probably be better. So now we're at the end and there's a couple things I wanna say. One, this was a lot of fun. And uh, thanks to the majority of you that made it this far. I checked the analytics and 35% of my viewers are subscribed. If you're not, uh, feel free to hit that button. I'm not even gonna ask you to hit the notification bell. That's like. Silly, if you hit the subscribe button, that's, I mean, uh, it's a low bar. It's a low bar. I'm not asking you for much more than that. This one though, I'm gonna send this off to Faye. I know she doesn't have an SL1 or a resin printer and, uh, or at least this one. Faye, I'm gonna send this to you if you promise to selfie with it. This one though, this is awesome, soap solids and all, and I think it should go to one of you. Yeah, let's do that. Let's do that. I'm going to give this away wherever you are in the world. I'd love for you to win this as long as you promise when you get it to get a selfie with it and tag me wherever you post it. I think that'd be the best part. But if you want to win this, there's a link in the description. I'm using Gleam. Go ahead and click that link. There are various ways to enter and I wish you the best of luck. Listen, if you've made it this far, you're awesome. A big thanks for everyone who hits that subscribe button. If you believe in a cause, don't give up and from a safe distance. High five. I'm a big vase, I'm a small vase, I'm a big vase, I'm a small vase. We are vases dancing on the table of pretty Brett and Nerd.
If I had one more, they could be the Schuyler sisters, right? This would be Peggy. <laughs>